Salam, and welcome to WEA Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Corey, and I'm here to share with you inspiring stories of amazing women and what they've gone through to get to where they are today. And my very special guest today is Aru Shisti from New York Beauty, and she has a degree in statistics, decisions, and information technology from the University of Maryland and worked in corporate America for 10 years, after which she wanted to do more for the community. For the last eight to nine years, she focused on service and tried to help the community in different organizations. But during all this time, she was getting burnt out and decided to get her health coach certification. Two of her kids have an autoimmune skin illness, so she started to research ingredients from the Sunna to help them, and then it moved on from there. She started her company, New York Beauty, that tries to source from the communities in need. New York Beauty does not only want to make amazing products, but also to make a difference from the beginning. They regularly participate in campaigns that give back, such as cancer awareness, Movember, winter drives, and more. Welcome, Aru Shisti, and thank you so much for being here. I hope you know people really learn about your story and your wisdoms. Um, so I wanted to know, you know, a little bit more about your company. If you can just share with that, share with me what is your company all about and what is New Beauty. Sure. Thanks so much, Alex, for having me and giving me the opportunity to um, be on your show and um, tell everybody about how I got into this line of work or entrepreneurship. Um, So New York Beauty kind of came as a happenstance, and I feel a lot of this happens serendipitously, right, Mm -hmm. to many people where I was... um, kind of done with corporate America and I had been in um, the community serve in service basically for a while on um, the board of our mosque, on the board of the school and just um, working on a lot of different projects. But I kind of uh, felt like I was burning out because I was, it was like a full-time job, but it was volunteering. Plus I had three little kids. And so I turned to um, kind of, um, uh, alternative ways of helping myself first. And so I um, took courses to become a holistic health coach and I started kind of on that that path. So I am a holistic health coach as well certified. Um, And that's how I first began like four years ago. Um, And then I started looking a little bit deeper into um, the products that I use around the home, the products that we put on our skin. Um, And then also I've always been um, careful about um, environmental sustainability and environmental protection and kind of, you know, um, was always an echo Muslim, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, So that's how I kind of got started. And I realized that the FDA does not regulate cosmetics and skincare very well. You can put whatever you want in whatever product you want and just sell it. Um, And there's so many marketing uh, schemes and there's greenwashing of products, all that type of stuff. So what I turned to was, um, and one of the things that Um, drove me to this is that two of my kids actually have um, an autoimmune skin condition um, called vitiligo. And so my, as my daughter was getting to be 12 years old, um, you know, she was becoming a teenager and needing products. So I didn't want to put anything on their skin that would uh, affect their hormones. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, we, we already, you know, eat clean um, quote unquote and try to in, um, trying to stay away from environmental toxins. So this was another step that we wanted to take. So I started creating products to, um, at home for basically myself and my kids. Um, and that was an idea that one of my friends gave me. She was like, Hey, you're doing this. I know, you know, so-and-so blogger that does this. And at that time I wasn't on social media. So I kind of just let it pass. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, but a couple of years later, that idea stuck in my head. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do this for my kids and my family. And then, um, then people in the community started saying, hey, your skin looks really nice. Or my daughter's name is Sefa. She's like, oh, and they would say, oh, Sefa's skin looks so nice. You know, what have you guys been doing? And I'm like, well, actually, I've been, you know, making my own products um, based on you know ingredients from the Quran and Sunnah and using those. Um, and so then I would give out little samples to my friends. And then I said, you know what? I could make a business of this. So I started going the, um, doing everything the right way. Like, so I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to record my data. I'm going to give this to 50 people, all the different products. And I'm going to go back after two weeks, four weeks, six weeks and record data. And they all agreed to this beforehand. So 
I have all the data on everybody who used my products for four to six weeks and see what type of difference they, that it made on their skin. So that's how I kind of began. And then I kind of had an idea about, um, or I kind of have a background in IT. So I was like, you know, I bet I could I could muster up a website. I bet I have enough resources to, you know, start this thing. But it didn't just happen. This was like a three-year process, you know, to um, get the products developed and tested and the packaging and researching everything. Um, so that's kind of how I got started. Um, but the one thing that I wanted to focus on, like I was saying, I've always been... Um, uh, kind of an echo person that I didn't just want to have a business and make money and kind of sell the Sunnah, right? Like Islam, right? I wanted to live it because what I'm um, basing everything on is um, the Sunnah of the Rasul and the ingredients that were, that were used in, uh, in Islam and how they benefit you. So to keep with the tenets of Islam, what I decided to do was let me see that I, how I can source my ingredients from like Muslim women's cooperatives in Africa or from underserved communities or from, uh, you, you know, from fair trade tree for, uh, tea farmers in India. Um, and that was not easy to do because you have to, um, that those, um, raw materials cost a lot more and to find companies that are actually um, certified in those and you have to kind of follow up to make sure that they're not just faking it kind of because that does happen so you have to do a lot of research to make sure that um, those cooperatives are real and that they have backing and that you can contact them and verify um, uh, same with the tea farms in India same with you know all the, these other um, areas and regions um, that I went to. So that took actually a very long time to do. Um, and then the next step was once we had the sourcing done was the packaging because um, there's like the statistics are like, um, I don't know how many tons. Sorry, I have this written down. Um, we have half a million tons of plastic waste. generated yeah. a year, a year of waste. Oh and the majority of that is the, you know, uh, personal care, skincare industry. Wow. Um, so our packaging is eco-friendly, reusable, and um, hopefully has minimal waste. Of course, this is an evolving process. Um, it's time consuming and it involves a lot of research. Um, so anyway, so that's how we we got started. Sorry for the long. No, long but story. I wanted to tell you, like your packaging, your products are really beautifully done. It doesn't even um, like I wouldn't have thought that it was like eco friendly, you know, kind of sustainable kind of material that you're using. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I that really was like that. Thank you. That was the other thing we wanted to make sure that it was kind of a luxury, mm -hmm. eco friendly product. As yeah. opposed to, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like luxury. <laughs> eco. That was the vibe we were going for. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, we didn't know if it or I didn't know, you know, um, if this would work out. This was just something I was trying on the side um, and, you know, staying up late nights to just kind of yeah. work on things. Because as you know, when you have kids and school and activities, it's um, that in itself is a full-time job. So it becomes kind of like a side an afterthought. And so um, initially that's what it was until, you know, a year ago where it became, you know, my my passion basically and what I try to strive towards every day. When did you start? Like when was, when did your company actually start? So we released, it's a funny story in 2019. So it has not been very long. Oh, okay. um, and I had, so let me tell you the story about how we actually released the product. So I had the website like 90% done. I had all my products, packaging and everything. And we were at, um, it was February 1st or 2nd, and it was a, um, uh, the National Hijab Day. It was an event that we had, that was in Oklahoma City. Um, and Melanie Alturk was there. She was the guest oh, speaker from yeah. Hot Hijab. 
um, and I actually sat next to her on the table. And one of my, um, one of the giveaways was, you know, a, the beauty package and it wasn't released or anything yet. I just, you know, knew the people from care and this was something that I wanted to offer as kind of a price. Right. And so, um, and it was through care. Sorry. I sat with her. I didn't tell her anything about my beauty products or anything like that, but just her being there and the speech she made encouraged me to, you know what, this is going to be my deadline and I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm yeah, just going to yeah. really Release it because you know you're like almost there, but you kind of doubt yourself, yeah, right? It's like that, the step you have to take. Yeah, is this really, um, you know, is this really going to work? Is this uh, why? Why are people going to buy my products? You know, you kind right. of have that self doubt in the back of your head, and once you release something, you're kind of afraid of the failure, right? Like mm-hmm. if, as long as I was trying to do that process, I was in my mind thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed. But once it's out there and, you know, what if people don't find my products? What if, you know, I don't get followers on Instagram? What if this doesn't work out? Then it kind of becomes real. And I think that's what I was afraid of. And that helped me back. Um, But anyway, so that was my you know, inspiration. And so within a month of that, um, care event, I released my, um, my, my company. That's awesome. I'm actually, I think how you're doing, like, how is it this year? I know, um, because of COVID there's a lot of struggles and sure. Yeah. I mean, um, pros and cons, of course. Um, I have to admit, I kind of went into a slump when March hit and um, everything kind of, you know, crashed in and we weren't really sure what was going to happen. And we thought it would blow over the kids being home and everything. And so for a couple of months, um, I was a little bit depressed, (laughs) you know, Um, hard. Yeah, like usually we go visit family during spring break, which we didn't. And then the summer rolled around and, you know, things like that. But after a couple of months, I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can from home. I mean, I was home based anyways, but I kind of got rejuvenated to just do better. Um, And initially, uh, when you're on social media, as you know, um, you kind of have to find your voice, right? Um, Uh, you know, and uh, like when you start off and and it evolves and it changes. And I think um, COVID helped me find my voice a little bit better. At first, I was a little bit afraid to um, have my face on social media. Um, And, you know, I used models. I used my friends who were willing to um, get on there and I didn't get on. I didn't have any, um, uh, any, um, uh, what like videos out or anything about myself. So um, I think COVID gave me that opportunity that kind of like push to just put myself out there um, yeah. a little bit further. You know, it's funny you say that because so many people who, um, I mean, in a lot of people are losing their jobs and, you know, not being successful. And there's so many issues and I, you know, it's so heartbreaking to see, you know, people losing their jobs and not being helped in any way. But I think there's another aspect of COVID that it's like, actually pushing people to be stronger and harder and like working um, more and showcasing themselves more and like, you know, really being out there saying there's nothing else, you know, there's nothing more to lose. Let's just. Right. <laughs> just do it all in. <laughs> Let's go yeah. all in and just see what happens. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I see uh-huh. that in your product. Is there any other um, times in your life that was really difficult that you were like, you know what, before you even launched, you're like, I'm going to, I'm not going to do this anymore. Or I'm just not going to do it. I mean, all the time. I mean, there's always self-doubt. I think um, me as a person, I'm not very, um, for example, I'm not a very um, beauty oriented person, meaning I don't do a lot of, I don't own a lot of beauty products per se, like a lot of makeup. Like I have like two shades of lipsticks and one eyeliner and one like, you know, like that. Like I can fit everything in one bag that I own. Um, and so I kind of self-doubted myself because when you go online and you see other people, you're like, well, all these people are like beauty experts and that's how they started their line. But you have to step back and see. And that's how I, I, I kind of did. I was like, well, I'm not selling cosmetics, right? What am I selling? And right. you have to kind of ground yourself. What am I, what is my niche? Um, and once you define that, that kind of helps you um, 
you know, build your confidence because my niche is I'm using ingredients that are proven from the Quran and Sunnah, from Ayurvedic medicine, from Chinese medicine, integrating them into my products um, and helping people with their skin, with their, you know, balance, balancing their hormones and things like yeah. that. So, um, so that's what I'm selling. So that I think was the hardest thing. Like, am I really the right person? Are people really going to look at me and say, oh yeah, she's the right person to be selling these, you know? Um, I, I think that was the hardest hurdle to get over mentally. And still there are days where I'm like, you know, like you don't get orders for a few days or whatever. And right, you're like, yeah. oh, do I really, you know, is this really what, um, you know, I should be doing, but you know, um, I, I feel everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like your risk, your calling, and there must be some other reason. Um, and so slowly, um, I didn't just want to have a product out there, but if you go to my website, I have a blog where I talk about the different ingredients um, and some of the different issues. Um, and as a second generation Muslim, I have the um, I have the ability to do that, right? Because I'm where we're here, we've been settled and we, we can go beyond just living, right? right? Like the first generation Muslims that were here, they couldn't think about the environment. They couldn't think about, um, you, you, you know, echo products and things like right. that. They're just trying to survive, right? right They're trying yeah. to make sure that they, um, you know, integrate into society and they can have a job and getting um, education for their children. So that was the goal of you know, it's the first generation. Um, second, as second, second generation Muslims, we have to look a little bit further and say, okay, we're here, we're American now. How can we better life for ourselves with and and our future generations? And with that comes also environmental responsibility. Because what is the what is the the timeline? They said like ten years. It's before crazy we can, we will not be able to reverse the damage that has been done by humans on this earth. Like that's ridiculous, right? You know, Islam teaches us that um, we are, uh, we are protectors of this earth, right? And we need to, when you, and we're just borrowing this space. And when you borrow something, you return it in equal or better shape, right? So when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how have we left this earth? We've you know, depleted resources. We've, you know, filled the landfills. Mm -hmm. um, we're not doing well uh, to all the animals around us that we um, slaughter. Like, you know, is halal really halal anymore? I feel like, you know, things like that. So we've moved so far away. So what I wanted to do more was, and what COVID brought me clarity was, I want to focus more on lifestyle changes, right? And so one of the things that I uh, researched even beforehand was um, the medicine of the prophet, um, as well as like eating habits and sleeping habits and how all of that affects us as humans as well and how that affects the world. Um, and if we truly live by the tenets of Islam, it all kind of fits in perfectly and we don't realize that once you deviate from that that's when you have all this imbalance of you know um uh social imbalance environmental imbalance imbalance in your own body <laughs> yeah, right? you, eat, you know yeah. um you know um the wealth imbalance between you know um the was it capitalistic societies and things like that so Anyways, that's my. Uh, oh, mashallah, that's, you know, that's really great. You know, uh, there's some companies that their intention is to just make a product to sell. But I feel like your intention is to create a product that's sustainable and also that helps people. So it's like your company is about beauty, but it's also about internal beauty and internal um, even like in Islam, like kind of bringing that religion inside that peace and calm and like balance in the body. Um, since you are using so many different like modalities like Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine in your products. So I really, I yes. love that. I think Thank it's you. Um, once you have that base, like I think you will inshallah be so successful because it's like, you need that structure and then um, you're not just, you know, just whimsily like doing whatever. So I really, I really right. think that's great. Um, thank you there, so much thank you I had some I had brought some with me uh, when I was hoping we could meet and I should have shipped some to you so I oh so no, I will okay. now 
No, that's okay. And I think people really should support um, these kind of companies like yours that are, their intentions are in Islam and also in helping the environment and helping people um, and the community. So I really love that you actually, you know, um, source things from overseas and communities that need help. And um, that's really hard work because people go to Chinese manufacturing companies. and uh, I agree. So that was, like I said, one of the hardest things was how can I, without, you know, when you start a company, you don't have a budget, right? Like you're, you're, you're not making any money. Um, and it's not going to be a while till you do, you know, break even and start making money. True. Yeah. So it's only been, we've only been in business for a year. So uh, one of the things that I can recommend to other biz- startup businesses is, um, source from and go to companies that are already making an impact in their own communities. So it's kind of like a trickle down effect, right? So I, I may not be helping a community directly, but I am sourcing and buying materials from companies that are. For example, some of the oils that we buy are from California and from um, Canada. But the companies that we buy from, for every order that they get, they I have like um, a feed the hungry program. So oh, for great. every order that they get, they um, you know feed a family of eight or whatever. Oh, wow. So there are companies out there. There are candle manufacturers. Um, for example, we sell you know natural candles that hire refugees that um, to make their candles. And um, and I actually didn't get that spot because you actually have to apply. As, wow. uh, as a customer to be able to, because they have a limited amount of, you know, customers that they can get to apply to even um, have those refugees make your so um, products for you. Um, the candle manufacturer I use is actually, uh, was, um, grew up in the Baltimore area. So when I, and she's a um, black uh, woman led um company and whatever um and how she helps the community is she helps the underserved communities in the Baltimore area that's great um as well and so just things like that like the tea manufacturers are fair trade certified and they have um and I talk to them often and they send me information about the families that have been helped in India and you know pictures of the, the children that have been able to go to school and things like that so there are companies out there that do that so uh, my products are a little bit on the higher end because of the fact that yeah. I don't go to China and use cheap products. Right. And, um, you know, I go to companies that are already making a difference. And so in that regard, we make a difference as well. Um, and in the past few months, one of the things that we started doing, because I've always been service oriented, is we um, kind of piggyback on the um any of the initiatives that are already happening. For example, in October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So what we did was we did two things. We, um, for Breast Cancer Awareness itself, we um, donated to a foundation that I know is like, you know, a top rated foundation that most of the money goes to the Susan Love Foundation. Um, The actual patients, um, a percentage of our um, sales. Um, and then we also teamed up with Team Wations and made caregiver packages. So our teas went in these care- caregiver packages that went to, um, you know, parents of uh, kids at the NIH in, in, oh, wow. in Maryland. Uh, we oh, made really 100 nice. packages. Um, so just things like that, because even those little things help us, um, help us get our good deeds, you know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because that's what we're going to be um, asked for at the end of the day, you know, yeah, like what have you, um, done? you know, how many good deeds do you have in the month of November? Uh, we did this last year as well. We're donating to, it's called November, um, basically men's health awareness. Um, and, and so this month we're focusing on men's health and because they're often overlooked, Right, they are, the, yeah. <laughs> they um, are, and yeah. they have they go into depression and they have you know body issues as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they have they can have illnesses, but just as a society, we're told to, um, you know, that men are supposed to be the strong ones. They're supposed to, you right. know, just suck it up and not show their suck emotions. So when <laughs> in actuality, we should be encouraging them yeah. to do the opposite because um, that's what Russell Thumb did, right? He showed his emotions and he went to his wife for comfort and he had a lot of patience. If there's somebody out there who 
um, wanted to go into something like your business, like something like that, what encouraging words or what kind of advice would you give them um, if to start up? Yeah. Okay. First of all, do your research, mm-hmm. right? You need to find a niche market because, um, you know, the beauty industry is, um, uh, the sustainable beauty industry is growing, mm-hmm. but at the same time, um, it's a $500 billion industry a year, right? So there's room for everyone. Okay. So do your research, find a niche. The second thing is there's so many free resources out there and cheaper resources if you're working on a budget. For example, the cosmetic chemist that I hired was from, I think she was from uh, Croatia and I found her online and she's a holistic um, natural chemist. And that's who I had formulate some of my products for me. Um, And as opposed to if you get somebody here, it's really, really expensive and almost unaffordable for somebody just starting up. Um, There are lots of um, platforms for websites that are already um, kind of have templates and really easy to just kind of plug in. um, And they're pretty cheap um, that you can use. Um, And then also reach out to um, people that you know, reach out to me, reach out to Alex, reach yeah. out to <laughs> every, a, a, reach a, out. anybody you know, um, yeah. because uh, believe it or not, we're here to help. Like, yeah. I'm not going to turn away anybody. I'm going to answer questions, you know, um, and that's one of the things that I find, you know, us women um, need to support each other, right? Yeah. Right. There's room for everybody in every single line of everything. everything, right? There can yeah. be 50 hijab brands, but you're still going to need, you know, everybody's still going to be successful, inshallah, yeah, inshallah right? Yeah. You, you know, We're all unique, I, you know. So. Yeah, exactly. They're all unique. I mean, I've been running job for 30 years and I have hijabs from every single company you could under the sun, under the sun, you know, it's not like I go to just one or two, right? Um, I, I love trying out new, new things and the ones I like. And if your product is good, people are going to be come back. So the first person who actually, um, Hasana from PFH. From PFH, yes, yeah. Yes, she's the first one I did that when I first started um, that helped me out. Oh, mashallah. Actually, mashallah. Yeah. She's an amazing, amazing She's person. She's also all about like supporting businesses. And, yes. You know, yes. Businesses and so she was the only one because I reached out to so many quote unquote influencers and I never heard back because I was starting up because I had like 80 followers or something. And, you know, yeah, yeah. they don't, know. They don't care know. as much. Yeah, yeah. It's like who came first, the, the, you know, the chicken or the egg. Like you have to like get there before influencers will even like look at you, um, which is kind of sad. But um, one of the things that I did find was, and it was really disheartening, is, um, you know, Tulsa, I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma now. It's a very small community. And when I first started, you you think that everybody's going to be supportive of you. And to your face, they are, right? But what I found out later, and thankfully I'm not the person type of person who really cares, but it it still hurts a little bit, is that the people who were saying good things about your products and your things, even during the trials behind your back, find out later, they were not saying good things, you know? And so that is a horrible because I'm a very positive and, yeah. and almost naive to the point of believing everybody and finding the good in everybody person. Yes. And that's kind of my, <laughs> that's kind of my downfall. I think people I have told me that since I was in college, you know, they're like, you're too naive. You're too naive. You need to like, you know, uh, assess people's personalities better or something like that, you know? Um, and so I kind of learned the hard way that not everybody is going to be supportive of you, even those who you think are your friends for whatever reason, you know, maybe they're it, it jealous. jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're jealous, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know, for whatever reasons. And you just have to look past that, right? You just have to be like, well, there are, they're always going to be haters. Um, but they're you just do better. you. Exactly. You just do you and you keep your intentions straight. Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as your intentions are for the right reasons, I think that you're going to be successful. Um, and alhamdulillah, I had so many supporters um, because I lived, I've lived in like seven states in the U.S. Just wow. right so, so I know everybody uh, in <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And so my product, so I didn't need people in Tulsa, right? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to ship my products to everybody else I know yeah, and have right. them do my trials for me, right? Yeah. Um, because once I started hearing these things, I was kind of disheartened and saying, you know, I, 
I don't really want to be part of a community that doesn't support me. I mean, I had a, a tribe here, but also, you know, the whole community as a community and, you know, those people. So anyway, so I went out to my childhood friends, my college friends, my people who I still everywhere. Um, and that's what you need. You need that support and family, of course, you know. And you also need honest support too. Like if something is like, they should have said something to you instead of like talking about it in the back. Like, exactly, exactly. She said, you know, I think this product needs to be tweaked in whatever way. And then you'd make it even better. You know what I mean? Exactly, so- exactly. And you know, my friends did. And my real friends did do that. For example, I had an eye cream that I had that cosmetic chemist um, um, make for me. Um, and my... Um, you know, my trial people, my guinea pigs used it for like a month. And they said, well, I didn't really notice um, a difference. And I, it just felt like a, a really good moisturizer for like my face, but it didn't really help the under eye issues that I wanted. And so I scrapped that. I said, thank you for that. I'm not going to, yeah. you know, waste my time on a product that's not going to work. That's I'm going to start from scratch and, you know, try something else because the Ambla, which is vitamin C and, you know, the black seed oil and everything else that I was using obviously wasn't working for the purpose that it I needed to and they did come back and say you know what the scent is a little bit strong can you you know tone it down a little bit in you know one of the facial oils or I like this formula better than that formula or you did you change something reviews. around yeah, yeah yeah and so I did and that's what took like two years is you go back and forth and you tweak and you get honest advice from people um but nonetheless you're always going to have those people that are um going to be haters. Um, and then the advice to other people is I'm not there yet, but when I look at people, um, what I always get is, Hey, are you going to, why don't you try and sell to Sephora? Why don't you get your products in Ulta? And I was like, yeah, that's the goal inshallah yes, eventually. <laughs> but, um, when I look at companies that have like drunk elephant, for example, or mad hippie, they started like 10 years ago. They didn't just get into Ulta and Sephora and stuff. When you look at their history, it was 10, 11 years ago that they first did what I'm doing now, right? Right, yeah. Um, started making things in their home or small businesses and manufacturers and getting into them. And so we can't look at um, somebody's end product and compare ourselves to them, right? They went through like a 10 year, 11 year, who knows how long journey, a very long journey to get to where they are. And um, in every walk of life, we can't compare ourselves to like, you know, if you're an influencer, if you're, um, you you know, like starting a business, you can't compare yourself to somebody who's been doing it or that's their like end product. And I think that's where that doubt comes in, right? Because that's what we see. You're seeing somebody's end end product, but you don't see the process that went behind it and the hardship. And the late nights and the hours right. and the sleeplessness and, you know, all that stuff. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, so many companies that you're like, oh, my God, they're so successful. Yeah, but they've been doing it. They're always do- have been doing it for an X amount of years. Like mm-hmm. it's been a long time. And so you're just seeing them finally reaching that point where they're like, it's like profit is happening, not, you know, um, right. putting it back into your business. So, yeah, people forget that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that pulls you down too, right? Like you're, yeah. you were asking about, you know, um, are there times when you doubt yourself and that's what kind of makes you doubt yourself is you see all this success everywhere on social media and you're like, why aren't I there? Why aren't, why aren't I there yet? You know? And then you have to step back and say, well, maybe I'm not putting enough work. I've only been in business for a year or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so, I, I'm really having a love and hate relationship with social media because um, I love, you know, sharing stories and meeting people from social media and, you know, Mm -hmm. um, seeing so many amazing women who are successful. But at the same time, it's like um, it also puts a little bit of pressure on you as a company to get the, as many subscribers, to get so many likes, to get, you know, um, people watching your views. And it's like not, it's not a, um, it doesn't showcase your, the truth about how successful you are in yourself and in your business. That's what I have an issue. I agree. I, I agree. Um, and I didn't get on social media, really social media till I started this company. So it's only been like 
a year and a half, yeah, right? But you like, have to be in it, you know? Yeah, you have to, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. to, or else how are you going to add time? <laughs> yes, I know. Especially being online. So you have to be. Um, but I think one of the things is we can't put all our eggs in one basket, right? right? Like you can't just be on Instagram only. I think you have to be on like Pinterest and Etsy Based and Facebook everywhere. and I th- everywhere. And yeah. I think that's where I personally am lacking. Like I've focused my energy on, you know, one or two platforms when I think you need to um, expand and kind of be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I think you'll do that. Right. So um, yes, yeah, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. I was hoping, you know, this year that all three of my kids would be in school. And, you know, now <laughs> that my youngest is a baby, uh, he was a baby. Oh, he's my baby, you know, so oh. he would be in school and he's a little bit more independent now. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen. Like, what? I'm homeschooling him. I'm not even, um, he's not even virtual because that didn't work out great. And I didn't think he would do really well. And so it's like, four or five hours out of the day is like sitting, you know, it's gone out of the day, just there. And so, um, you know, I, I guess that's for the better, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. And so this is a plan um, and we have to accept it because you may have something in your mind that, oh, I want to be here by then, but these hurdles comes in, come in the way. Maybe it's to slow you down to rethink to reanalyze to reprioritize you right. know yeah. um and you just have to say alhamdulillah and you know make the most of it that's so. great yeah well thank you so much Aruj, for being here for giving your wisdom your story um i love your business and your concept of your business and i wanted to um ask you how can people contact you what's the best way um if you can let them know here. Sure. Um, if you go to my website, there's a, a contact page, so you can contact me through there. But um, everything's pretty simple. So Muir Beauty is our Instagram handle. Um, you can DM me. Um, Muir Beauty at gmail.com is our email. Um, you can always email me. And um, you can find us on Facebook as well. See Muir Beauty. Okay, great. And I'll put these all in the show notes and on no the problem. YouTube notes and every place possible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alice, for having me in um, creating this podcast, because I think it's so important to empower um, and uplift other women and entrepreneurs and um, showcase that everybody is kind of in the same boat and yeah. we can just support each other. Yes. Alhamdulillah.